Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together uh, for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, so to got, tonight, you guys, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. So we started this, gosh, it might be, it might have been two years ago. It was at least last year and we're about halfway done. We are working our way through all of the blocks. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are working on these blocks as well. Uh, I do have all the videos of the previous blocks up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. If you want to check out previous ones there, we are working on the Stitch and Paws block tonight some more. We started the embroidery on it and uh, we are going to continue embroidering tonight. We have all our colors picked up out and we are uh, ready to go. So thanks again for joining me. Next week we are going to be starting the embroidery of the month stitch along. So that is the house plants. Uh, you can check that out. Uh, I have a link below here as well. So thanks for joining me everyone. Nice seeing you pop in again. All right so here we are with the um, the splendid sampler 2. Uh, this is our uh, project right here, and we did all of the stem stitching. I was not expecting to get all of that done, um, but we did get it all done last night. So tonight I want to do the rest of the stems, and the rest of the stems, according to our pattern here, are going to be done with, with a, a chain stitch. So we have kind of the color guide. We're going a little off of the color guide, but we are sticking to the different, uh, different stitches. So I have my little copy here. So next up is the chain stitch. That's going to be all of these fat lines going, going through here. So that is the plan. All right, I got all my colors picked out. We did that yesterday. We're pretty much done with this yellow. That was our, our stem stitch. For this chain stitch, we are going to use this pretty green color. And these are all variegated threads. And uh, the variegated threads, that just means that the colors change throughout. So like this one, you can see it goes from yellow to green. Uh, it's just kind of fun. So all right, let's get going. All right, so I have this green. First of all, let's get, let's get Zeb out here again. He is my little needle holder. There, I think this guy is what we we're using last night. All right, so um, let's check out the colors again. So I want to start with this green. It looks like it really is just the three uh, stems that go up to the, the paws. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. All right. I'm getting about yeah my 24 inches or so of of thread. That's kind of my favorite length. Any longer and uh, your thread is really rubbing against the fabric for a lot longer time, and that can wear down the thread. And just your shoulder has a long way to go. Uh, you, a lot of repetition for the shoulder if you're pulling the thread like way back every single time. All right. Oop, I'm pulling that one thread out one at a time. And since it is variegated, I'm going to try and make sure that I'm putting them back. Like I'm not, they're both like the tops here are going to be the tops here. I'm not going to accidentally flip one around because I do want them to uh, lay nice or lay, like have this, the variegation of color go the same throughout. All right, so I see all of you popping up in the chat as well. Nice seeing you. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm just using two strands of thread for this design. Uh, I'm not sure it actually said how many strands to use, but in the past, uh, for this particular project, they've been pretty much two strands. So I figured, why not? 
I'm not using a hoop again tonight. And that's because the two stitches that, that are being used, the stem stitch and the chain stitch, really do work well with um, just, just using without a hoop because we can use that sewing method. And we'll do that again. I'm going to start with this line right here. OK, and I'm going to weave in the ends of my floss uh, behind the stitches here. We don't have to start with a knot. I like, I like weaving in the ends that way. Uh, I don't have any knots on the back, so my threads aren't going to catch on anything. Uh, I'm not going to be stitching and then realize that my thread has been caught from 20 stitches ago. This just makes everything end up nice and flat. All right, jump onto the other side here. OK, so for a chain stitch, I'm going to just come up right at the beginning of my line here. And uh, uh, I'm going to pull the thread all the way out. And again, for the sewing method of doing this, sewing method means you're going to go in and out within the same motion. Uh, you're not going to go all the way. You're not going to pull the thread all the way to the back and then come up all the way to the top again. So, all right. Oh, Bonnie, that's right. Oh, I was going to show that. Oh, oh well, um, I don't have them right here. But I did get a few more koalas. Uh, I got four more koalas today, so we are up to 98 koalas. Can you believe that? So 98 koalas. Uh, I, I know for sure we are going to hit that 100 mark. So we are going to have 100 koalas. Uh, we might even have to make like two maybe smaller quilts. I don't know. We're going to have to see what they're like all laid out, but I cannot believe it. We are totally going to hit 100. Oh, that's just so amazing. You guys are amazing for doing all those koalas. All right, so for the sewing method, I'm going in and out. So my needle is going in and out. Uh, but I kind of made this loop. I'm going in and out, and I'm going to exit with that loop going around. So I'm going to pull on that. And I'm pulling the thread up, and that loop is being going to get caught onto the thread that I pulled out there. So I'm going to get really close. It might have to focus a little bit. Um, uh, we are going to work on this camera so it gets a little bit better focus and it doesn't keep auto-focusing like it is. But this is only day two of us trying this new setup. So thanks again for joining me and hanging out with me here. We're going to get this really nice so we can get nice and close and it looks, looks good. So all right, so here are my first two stitches. I'm going to go... When, when you finish a stitch, you're going to put the needle right back in the same place, make this loop, but you're going to go in and then come out right up the line. You can actually take this loop and put it right behind the needle right away like that. So that, that's, uh, that can be helpful. Then you don't have to really think about the loop. Just put the thread behind, then pull through. So let's do it that way again. I'm going to go in and out with my needle along the line. I'm going to place that thread behind. Uh, I'm going to loop it behind my needle, the needle tip there. And then you can pull uh, the rest. Oh, my mom just said hers, her koala is in the mail. <laughs> oh, that's nice. So my mom and my husband are going to have their koalas in this. That's cool. Oh, dang, six from, six from uh, Australia there. So uh, we'll be up to 104 for sure. And then one from my mom, that's 105. Dang. And I know I saw a few other of you guys post in the group that you're sending them yet. So hoo-wee, we're going to have a lot. But uh, it really is like so fun getting the mail now. <laughs> the mailman's like, what are all these different envelopes that are all different and they keep coming. It's kind of neat. All right, place that thread behind. We are almost done with this first line already. And it does work really, really well for, uh, for without using a hoop. So this can lay slack and we're just going in and out. 
it's that sewing method really that makes stitching without a hoop um, work so well. And specifically the stem stitch and this chain stitch um, works really well like that. Okay, so I'm gonna try and get close here again. Uh, there you can kind of see the stem stitch. It's looking awfully pretty. It's just a pale green. It's really close to the yellow, but not quite. Uh, for that last, so we have to lock down that last stitch. So I'm gonna just go on the outside of that stitch and near, uh, near where that final thread came out. And we're just basically tacking down that loop with a tiny, tiny, tiny stitch. And there we go. So we are, we got our whole line tacked down. Uh, it's, it's good to go right there. And now we can really just kind of jump to the next line. Um, I may have enough, I don't, I probably don't have enough thread to get all the way up to the top of this one. Um, so I might, I might have enough to get here though. So I think I'm going to thread behind all these stitches and then start at the bottom here again and then go up to here. And if we have enough, I'll keep going, but I suspect, I suspect I won't have enough thread. I could just jump to go, I could just jump here and go down, but then the shape of my, the shape of my, um, the, the stitches would be kind of going in the opposite direction. So I think, uh, I think we'll just kind of, we'll go down to the bottom and then go up this way. Then, then it'll be like that teardrop going up sort of shape. All right. And instead of just jumping down here, which will make a big toe catcher, like a big, a big, uh, a big jump that will, um, have a big loop. I am just stitching in the back of these stitches, just grabbing a bunch of stitches. Again, this is just to kind of hold, hold the thread down so I don't have a big jump. All right, and now we can kind of come up here again. Right down in the base of this bow. We do have these little guys to do, but I think we'll do those at the end. Oh, you can hear me, uh, you can hear me tonight. Yep, we, so we did work on the sound. <laughs> so every, every night I'm hoping it will get a little bit better. I think we're gonna have to order uh, a little something more, a, a, like a close-up camera that doesn't auto adjust for, for all this close work, which is basically everything we do on this show is this kind of close work like this. Um, but yeah, so we're working on it. So sound, I think we got a, a little bit more figured out. Um, so thanks, thanks for your tips and letting us know about that. Hoping to get it better and better. I think this pale green is gonna be really pretty. And especially once we get some of these other still kind of pale, but you know, some of other parts of that color spectrum, that's going to be, it's just going to keep adding to it, I think. And having this green and the yellow stems pretty close in color, I think it'll make it so like one set of stems doesn't just jump out at you compared to the other set of stems. kind of at a weird angle, like I'm trying to figure out what's the best, the best way to hold this right now. I still like making that loop shape. I think I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try and do, oh, it's gonna be close, but I, I think I am gonna try and get these stitches. That would be kind of nice. I know, Robin, isn't it awesome that we got that many koalas? It, it's just amazing. I am so excited. Uh, I got thinking though, um, you know how, so this is the Splendid Sampler 2. We've already done the first Splendid Sampler and that was a hundred blocks, right? And the blocks are only this big and this is kind of about as big as the koalas, right? Um, so uh, there, there's a lot and uh, that was a queen size quilt, my, my uh, first splendid sampler. So we're talking that this could probably be a big quilt. I'm wondering if we can do, um, if we can do more than one. 
The sound is great. I'm noticing going in and out of clear focus though, DD. Yep. So that is, that's the, that's going to be our next challenge. Um, I know it's getting kind of blown out here, kind of white to white. It, it's because this camera um, for this close up, um, it's auto adjusting quite a bit. So we're going to, we're going to dig into, uh, we're going to get a different camera for that, but we got to do some research and um, figure that out yet. What would be the best close up camera? for streaming so it doesn't just keep going in and out of focus. But, but yeah, that's, I'm, I'm trying to, that's, that's next project for sure. <laughs> All right, we are barely gonna get to the end of this. I'm gonna try and maybe make a little bit bigger stitches to get us there faster. All right, I gotta wrap that thread around. I think I can get this in three stitches, but the question is, will I have enough thread? Thread chicken, playing thread chicken, chicken again. This is gonna be a, a big stitch, but oh well. There, these paws aren't aren't floating in space anymore. That's kind of nice. Oh yeah, two or three smaller quilts. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking it might actually be nicer as a twin size or a large lap quilt anyway, just because, I don't know, I think that's probably a more used quilt than a queen size, and a queen size quilt full of koalas maybe maybe would be a little goofy. So, um, and then we can put like a pretty border on and stuff too. So yeah, maybe we do two. Uh, so that that's definitely something um, I'm considering. I think probably what will happen is I will go to my mom and dad's house. We will lay them all on the ground and uh, just kind of see, see what we see, <laughs> I think, uh, just to see how big is this going to be. Kind of lay it out, fold the edges over, see how big it might be, and then split it up, see if it looks nicer with two, uh, doing two whole ones. That'll be kind of neat. And uh, uh, my mom had kind of a, a nice idea. I thought um, if we do get a bunch of koalas after after we've already made the quilt, because I know some of you guys are still making them and, and sending them to me. But if, we, if it so happens that I don't get them in time, we were thinking that it might be nice to um, make a little wall hanging or whatever whatever um, koalas are left over. Yeah, like a little wall hanging or a little mini quilt or however many are there. Maybe it's a, a whole twin size or like a, a lap quilt again. Uh, but we could, we could give that to the uh, Australians for animals. And it, it could maybe be like something that uh, the organizer has just in her office or something, you know? <laughs> and it could be like our little thank you to them for uh, for doing what they do, helping all helping all those other smaller shelters and helping them with their animals. These smaller shelters, so that is an option as well that I think is would be awfully sweet. And again, that would be if we get any straggling um, koalas in the mail because. I mean, I'm not going to toss, I'm not going to throw them away or anything. We're definitely going to be using uh, all the koalas. So <laughs> uh, I just want you guys to know that if we do get your koalas late, I think they'll still go to like a nice cause. And we can always make more to donate as well. I think that'd be nice too. Um, all right, uh, let's do this final one. I think this really is it for this green. Let's just double check. Yeah, I think it's just those three lines. Oh, nope. I gotta do I gotta do these little bits down there. Can't forget that. So, all right, I'm still gonna go from bottom to top though, so my stitches look the same as these other ones. So let's weave in the ends again. Again, I'm doing this versus tying a knot. 
Oh, Paula says that she's more than happy to make more koalas. Oh, that's awesome. So, yeah. Uh, you know what? Maybe that will be a nice thing to do anyway. Maybe we should just plan on doing that. Um, collecting a few more koalas and making a nice gift quilt uh, for Sue, who's the, the, uh, who runs the organization. All right. Zoop. Let's do that. This uh, last little stem here. I think I'm I think sideways. I think for some reason I'm feeling right to left on this. These chain stitches tonight are feeling right. And I know I do that differently some other time, some or other times as well. Or like I, I uh, go at a different angle, but you know, you got to go with what feels right. And right now it's right to left. Yeah. So I keep kind of making that loop with my thumb. I find that an easy way to do it. And then that sewing method where you go in and out, that's definitely key. I just kind of lay it on a flat surface every once in a while just because we are um, still dealing with um, no hoop. So I want to make sure that I'm not pulling my bits too, too tight. Oh, your game too? Yay! Oh, Nolene, Nolene knows Sue, so uh, she said Sue would love that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, it, we are getting overwhelmed in, in koalas, which is amazing. Oh, and you guys, I have a other good news as far, the, as far as the koalas go. So when I made, uh, when we, uh, when I made that donation to them um, out of the money that I collected from you guys getting the the patterns and the kits and all that and making all these koalas, um, it didn't occur to me that when I was donating, I was donating in Australian dollars. Uh, I just got my bank statement. That's why I know this. <laughs> so uh, it actually was Australian dollars, and uh, our dollars are must be doing a little bit better uh, right now. So. Uh, um, we're going to get more out of our donation than I thought. So uh, that's going to be awesome. So we can actually donate um, more. So when, when I, the, what I'm saying is like the number that I donated was a lot less than what it turned out <laughs> in the bank account. So um, we can donate more. They're going to get more out of our dollar right now. So that's awesome. Super excited about that. So I'll probably send uh, our second run of donations soon. And um, yeah, and then we'll collect um, whatever we raise from these quilts. Uh, and you, OK, I'm totally just brainstorming offhand, or like right now. <laughs> but if we do make two quilts, like two smaller quilts, maybe we auction one off, like kind of how, you know, see how much we can raise with one. But maybe the other one we do do as a raffle um, so that everyone could have a chance on winning that. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm going to have to look up the rules for that. And maybe we don't do it at the same time. Or, or I don't know. I don't know all about that. But then then we could do an auction or, or, or a raffle. We could do it in two different ways is, I guess, what I'm saying if we have two quilts. That'd be kind of a neat way to do it. We'll have to check on that. This is pretty. So I can kind of see the green transition into kind of more of a yellow. Gosh, I need to use variegated thread more often. And like I was saying yesterday, I know a, a lot of the koalas that I'm getting, so a lot of what you guys are doing, you're, when you're pulling the strands to do the um, the to put your uh, to to put your thread together, some of you are taking a strand of one color, like for the koala, for example, like a dark brown, and then pulling another strand, but having it be a light brown, and having two different strands here um, instead of from the same floss, and that is just looking so pretty as well and I've never done that before but it is a neat way to like bring bring colors together it's just 
really fun. So <laughs> it has just been really neat seeing all of all of your koalas. And it, like I said, I did get four more today, uh, and I just forgot to bring them. I, I even have them at home here, but I forgot to bring them uh, to the table here tonight. So I will show you. Um, I'll show you today's and tomorrow's when I come on tomorrow. And by then, if I get two more tomorrow, that, that puts us at 100. 100 koalas. Crazy. Oh, Aaliyah, have, have fun with the bag making class. That sounds exciting. That's something I'd like to get better at. Get that bag making going. All right, last stitch here. And I gotta make that anchor stitch. Oh, I was thinking we were done, but I forgot we got these little guys at the bottom here. Okay, I'm making that tiny stitch on top. I'm actually kind of tucking it under this paw a little bit. Um, yeah, that worked. Oh, this green is pretty. Okay, I really like this. Um, I do have a little bit of, like, probably enough floss for one, but since I have more green right here, I'm gonna just thread thread a whole nother one. Ooh, Sue says that her four koalas should be here tomorrow. Awesome. That's, that's great. Oh, you did. Okay. Lucy, Lucy did black and gray floss for the nose. Yes. That is just so cute. So, so fun. And, uh, one of the ones I got today used a variegated floss for the nose and, uh, it's still satin stitch, so it starts off one color and gradually gets to another color and another color. That just looked really kind of sweet, too. They all are just really fun. They're all completely different, too. Even when they're using the same, fa like, from the bundle, the same fabric, the same thread, it's still, they're all just different. They all have their own personality. It's just fun. All right, got the ends woven in. Looking awfully cute there. Uh, all right, so we just need these little stemmy stems down there. Uh, how are we doing in time? We got tons of time yet. Great, so what do we do next? Oh, you know what I didn't even think about? All of these, a lot of these have a bunch of little leaves. <laughs> so, Oh, what color should we make those? Should we make those out of the green? I mean, they're mostly on these the yellow bits, but the green is kind of like, it's close to the yellow. So we could just kind of travel around the piece, I suppose, and hit all these little uh, lazy daisy stitches. I kind of just didn't think about those at all, but we do have several leaves all over the place here. Um, yeah, we should maybe do that, especially we have this long thread now. I think let's do the chain stitch on these, then I'll just weave in the backs and get to, you know, a petal here and there. Can't forget those, or not petal, the, the leaves. Okay, uh, let's weave in the ends here. I think I am going to still start bottom up, so it, it is, the, so the shape of the stitches are still the same, so I'll go bottom up, and then I'll come back to the bottom again, and then the bottom again. Just, I don't know, I'm being picky, I guess. You don't really have to do that. Where am I starting over on this side? Okay. But I was being picky at the top, so might as well still, still be a little bit picky. Why not? Although that might be a sign that I'm tired. I feel like I, I feel like I get pickier or like my, my ability to just go to 80% good instead of trying to be perfect um, goes a little bit down the tubes if I'm tired. So I feel like, I feel like, oh, I must be tired if I'm trying to make this all go the same direction, and it's an important thing for me to, for these to all go in the same direction, but, <laughs> oh well. They can all go the same direction. Oh, and I, I shouldn't mention this. I, I put this in the, in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group, 
but I know some of you guys really liked working on this last year. Um, so Betts White, she did that Lil Felt Village project last year that we looked at. We worked on the spooky clock tower. Oh, that must have been October. Yeah, so in October, we worked on the spooky clock tower. She is offering that um, those projects again. So um, if you missed out on the the um, Lil Felt Village, she's having the program again, but I think just to the 13th, and you get all the patterns right away. You don't have to wait for them. And I actually, I think you can purchase by season. So if you just want the spring ones, you can get the spring ones. If you just want the winter ones, you can just get those. Uh, I think there's a discount or something if you get all of them. But I know a lot of you were interested in that last year, so I just want to let you guys know about that. Um, I put that link in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. But yeah, so check that out if you are interested. All right, now I'm down here again. I just wove in the back. I'm going to get that little thread and then over here. Oh, okay, so uh, we got the exchange right now. So one US dollar is almost one and a half dollars. So our, our money's going farther for this donation right now, which, which was so surprising. I, I saw that in the, um, saw that in my bank statement. I'm like, oh my gosh, we're gonna be able to donate a whole lot more. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty cool. That's just really, really cool, actually. Really, really cool. I think we'll get this one in two more stitches. I probably could stretch this to three stitches, but this is the tough kind of area where I'm going through tons of layers of fabric too, because we have all these seam allowances. So just two, two threads is good. Or I mean, two, um, two stitches. All right, and anchor that stitch down. And I suppose I'll weave in the ends here again too, just so I don't have a big jump. And here's our last little row, last little stem. This green is so pretty. I'm debating whether we do the green for the leaves or if we do it the same color as the stems. I think we do green. But um, I'll have to get more thread out. That's, that's the question mark in my head. Like, oh, I have some yellow thread all available here already, but the green is so pretty. I want to use the green. But you'll have to get more green. Okay, let's tack this down. All right, now I'm gonna kind of search out these little leaves. Um, I guess let's just start from the right and go bloop. It looks like it's only down here. It doesn't look like there's any leaves up here, so that's good, so maybe we can get all these. Uh, so a leaf, it's just like one chain stitch. So the chain stitches that are we do that we're doing here, it's exactly the same, except for we're anchoring it down after just one stitch. We're not starting another stitch. So let's. Uh, I'm gonna just jump up here, go in the backs of some more stitches, so I don't have that big of a jump. And uh, yeah, let's let's uh, go right here. I'm going right to left. So I'm starting at the bottom bottom part of that leaf. I'm kind of going forward with my stitches. So or I'm still going kind of right to left. OK, so doing that in and out right away, too. I'm going to put that thread behind it, just like how I'm making a normal chain stitch. But at this point, I'm going to tack it down with that one little stitch on the other side. There we go. So that leaf is done, just like all these other chain stitches. 
but we're just tacking it down after one stitch instead of at the end of a row. So we got this guy, little leaf next to it. This one's going to be a little greener than that first one, just because of the variegated thread. All right, how many more? One, two, three. Is there two here? I'm looking at the design. So one, two. Oh, there's one hidden down here, but I have so much other thread there that I don't think I'm going to bother with one hidden down here. But then we have this one and then two up there. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to worry about the one that's right there, I don't think. This guy. I think what's nice about these leaves, they're just kind of filling out the bouquet in this area. Um, Design-wise, it's just going to make that area look like there's more stuff there. Kind of like a real bouquet, like, you know, it all gather kind of in the middle and spread out um, towards the top. I think that's we're getting that effect by putting all these leaves in here. All right, so I'm getting this one. And these two, and then we got two down here. Oh, there is, oh, there are some more hiding up there. So I, I will probably need more floss. Eh, we'll use that green again, it's pretty. Actually, maybe we'll use it again in this quilt. Um, we should keep these colors around just so we can use some similar colors later. Okay. And I'm gonna try and force one more out of here just because there's only one more up here. Oh, you can actually go in and out to find, get to your next stitch too. That's a little quicker. Okay, last stitch uh, before I get more floss. Okay, let's thread that. I kind of did that stitch over this stem, so um, that leaf looks like it's in front of, of this stem, which I think is kind of fun. Oop, shoot, lost my thread. Let's uh, try and get that back. I do wanna weave that in two more times. I only did it once. I always go for three. That third is what locks it in. We'll do a short one. All right. There we are. Yeah, I think this is looking really, oh, where'd it go? Looking really, oh, there we are, really cute with this green. All right, so we just have, what is it? Um, oh, there's two here. So there's two hiding here uh, and then two here. And I have this tiny little piece. I don't think that's going to cut it. Uh, I could just use some yellow because I have it, but I'm really liking that green. I'm going to just cut more green and be done with it. It's here to use, right? That's, that's why I have all this thread. I should be using it. And I'm not going to throw the other stuff away. At worst, uh, all my extra thread will become a, uh, uh, at worst, they'll become little puff balls. <laughs> kind of like, um, we'll get uh, my little thread unicorn here. This is one of those thread uh, thread pooping unicorns from Fish Museum and Circus. But this is all um, just a pom-pom, I keep saying puffball, but a pom-pom um, made out of all of my scrap. So all of these little bits at some point will maybe become a little little pom-pom backpack for, for this guy. So they won't go to waste. They'll, it'll become something. So even if I don't use it up right now, it'll 
it'll be something. Gotta save all them little threads. Okay, one. I'm just isolating that one thread and holding the rest. It bunches all up behind, but then it just kind of releases. And I, I like running my hand through it again just to make sure that it doesn't curl up on itself. It just relaxes it again. Okay, we're ready. So what did I say? One, two, three, four. I think we missed, I don't, I don't think we missed any, except for that one that I didn't do in the middle there because I kind of had a lot of stuff there. <laughs> the dynamic duo, we do have uh, one more two. Okay, uh, flip that over. Oh, Sally, it's awesome. Nice work, you guys. Oh, you have a nest of odds and ends, too. Oh, <laughs> when you cross-stitch. All right, um, I'm going to weave in the ends here. I'll get these two, and then I'll just jump up and get these two. Where are they now? Right there. Oh, you're doing, you're using your, um, extras to uh, fill those uh, glass Christmas bulbs. So I, I ordered some of those um, last year, but I didn't, I ordered them too late and I didn't have, um, I didn't finish them in time for Christmas, but I would love to do that this year too. Um, I got some of those ornaments you can fill with stuff and I thought that would be really fun for some of the, some of these odds and ends too. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna make these leaves a little bit smaller. I'm looking at the design and they are a little bit smaller. I think my, oop, didn't go on the inside of that loop. I just think my uh, uh, applique here got a little too big. All right, one more right here. Finishing that one. All right, and then jump up here. And I'll just come up eh, about right there. I don't think I drew that on very well. There, I think that's our last leaf. Let's tack that down. Um, let's just double check. Again, I'm just kind of go looking at my, my sheet here again. We got those, those, one, two, three. That one I, I just didn't do. One, two, these are all petals and just those two, okay. I think we got them all. Let's weave in the ends. Snip our thread. Man, what are we gonna do next here? We still have tons of chain stitching and uh, we have all of the, the flowers to do yet as well. Those are lazy daisies. I think I'll do the French knots last. And I typically try and um, leave my French knots to last if it makes sense uh, because the same reason I don't like knots on the back, um, the moment I put knots here, then uh, all of my stitches, like if I have a big chain stitch loop, then it might catch on here. So like if I'm doing, you know, I'm stitching a chain stitch down here and uh, I'm looping it around, but then I got a French knot up here and then it just catches. Uh, and then if I miss that, if I don't see that happening, um, it's a little hard on the front to miss it, but like, 
that's annoying. Now I have this big loop where I have to unpick it from the French knot. Uh, French knots are like loop traps. So <laughs> I, I try and leave that till the end. So I suppose we could um, we could either do the we could do the we could start the bow. I, I don't think we're gonna finish. Um, actually, it's getting pretty late already. Maybe we just start this up again tomorrow. Um, so maybe we uh, um, maybe we start the bow tomorrow, or should we do the bow last? I kind of well, I want to do the French knots last. So let's. Let's maybe do the bow. Okay, and we haven't really decided, like made a final decision on colors yet either. So maybe we can do that right now. I think last night I was kind of leaning towards um, a red bow. I think that's still kind of pretty, this red bow. Let's just take some out. Let's see what it looks like less bold there. So, oh, that's pretty. So let's just, let's just like make a little loopy mess here, kind of like a bow. There we go, and it'll loop over there. I think that'll be kind of pretty. I like that color. Okay, that's the red is kind of our most, our boldest color. So I think it's okay to be the bow. Um, then I was thinking for the flowers, there are two different flower colors in the, the color pattern here. So uh, actually, I'll just, uh, so here you can kind of see the um, we do have different colors here, so they're already set for us. So we can. Uh, I th I think that maybe these. I kind of have this uh, gray. It's a little gray and a little kind of mauvey color. The mauve kind of goes a lot with this red. So we could do that gray. The gray could be our lighter color, and the mauve could be our kind of darker color if we're comparing it to here. And then I thought the purple for the centers, although these two look pretty as well, and this could be the center. Uh, we're going to have trouble when it comes to, to picking. Um, hold on a sec, you guys. Whoop. Hold on. There's my other camera there. OK. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to have trouble picking this. So uh, we'll have to choose the combos of that. So I think just based on that, maybe we do the bow uh, instead tomorrow, just because I can't choose. <laughs> so why don't we just to get a, get a um, just to get real qu quick with it, uh, so we can start right away tomorrow. Uh, we have a few minutes yet, so I think let's just get some thread going because I think this bow may take a little little time. There's quite a lot to the bow. And the bow is chain stitched again, just like what we did today. We did all chain stitches today, except for the French knots. We're kind of all chain stitches till the end here. Okay. And um, yeah, we might just get get started, get a plan going here. And then we'll be all ready to continue tomorrow. So what's tomorrow? Tomorrow's Wednesday. All right, I want to finish this block by the end of the week, um, no matter what. Like, it's got to get done. I think we will. We've been working on this block for ages. <laughs> and this, this block kind of carried over from last year uh, as well when we kind of slowed down on the, the Splendid Sampler. So I really want to do this. So by the end of tomorrow, we should have this bow done. And then maybe one more day um, for all these petals and then the French knots. Uh, I, I don't see why we wouldn't be done by by Friday, so that'd be nice. Okay, what would be the best way to do this? All right, so I'm going to just go by my normal way of thinking, which are things in the back you stitch first and the things most in front you stitch last. So they're actually physically, those stitches are physically in front of the, the ones behind. And in my mind, these bow, um, what would you even call those? The, the bow parts of the bow <laughs> um, would be further back than 
than this because this is the part that's wrapping around the bouquet. So in theory, that would be wrapped around and then the bow parts would be a little bit farther back. And, and same, with, same with these little strands. They look like they're behind this. So I, I think we're going to, I think I'm going to start with these bows. Then I'll follow this path for here, follow this path for here, and then we'll end up uh, with these. And this is going to be pretty bulky because this, these are chain stitches still. So these are going to be fat, um, fat bows. And we're going to go over, over the stem stitches here. Um, it's going to be pretty though. Let's, let's start. Oh, let's start here. We're getting kind of a big bulky area of thread here. Oh, this pink is going to be so pretty. All right. I kind of want to do a little bit tonight yet. So I'm going to do, I want to do this outside bow. And it's kind of going right over these stitches. Actually, it's kind of tucked just underneath the stitches. I, I think I just drew it kind of poorly on here. So I'm going to just tuck right underneath this a little bit. So now with chain stitches, this is one of those, one of these stitches that if you have to go around a tight curve like this, you're going to want to do, you're going to want to um, make the stitches a little bit smaller, I think, just to get that impression of a curve versus a bunch of little straight lines together. Oh, this color is going to be just right, I think. We're still kind of riding the edge of that stem from the flower. Now we're going to kind of separate from it. Yay, we're getting a head start. Man, if we keep going at this, by Friday we might actually have, um, we may actually have time to uh, start the next block potentially or at least pick out fabrics or I don't know um, so if you guys have uh, if you guys want to know what or if you guys want to suggest what block we should do next um, feel free to uh, if I don't see it here make sure to post what you think we should work on in the the penguin and fish crafters group I will take a look there as well the penguin and fish crafters Facebook group because I know a lot of you are still working on the Splendid Sampler 2 project here with me. Um, so yeah, if you're stuck on a block or you're currently working on one and want me to work on it too, we'll get that going. But again, um, we'll probably only get a chance to work on it for a day and then we'll, uh, we'll have to wait till next month because this is uh, week two with a full Second week of the month is when we work on the Splendid Sampler 2. All right, so we got around there. I'm going to tack it down. And I think um, let's do this middle one. So I could start here again and go along the side. I think I probably should do that. I was thinking, oh, I could just start up here, but to make it feel like it's a whole nother row of the bow, I think I should start, or another edge of the bow, I think I should do another row next to it here. Oh, thanks, Dee Dee. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really in love with this color right now. Uh, I think it'll be the most bold color in this, but I think that's okay. I think that's actually kind of nice, because that would be kind of like real life a little bit, that you get a nice bow on your um, pretty, pretty bouquet. I think there'll be a lot of color in the flowers as well, but I just don't think it'll be as quite as bold as this bow. 
And I mean, we're, we're doing these big chain stitches too, which again, make it even bolder because it's that um, double thickness type stitch because we got two parts of the stitch are right next to each other. Ooh, see, I'm making a real small one here. We got a real tight curve. Come on, let's um, go in and out first and then worry about wrapping around. Oh, Barbara, well, that is good to know. Uh, Barbara says that after, after this one, um, oh no, Leslie, Leslie says that after this one, uh, I should have officially finished the most challenging blocks. <laughs> I really hope that's true, because if we can cruise through the rest, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Oh, Barbara, you went and got some variegated floss last night. Uh, it, is just, it is just straight fun to, to work with. I always felt weird about it, because I'm like, oh, I want to really pick the color that I want to stitch with, and this just keeps changing colors, but it adds such a pretty texture and effect to things that I just really, really like it. Okay, I think that's a great start. We got to see what that color looks like a little bit. I'm going to just bring up the needle to the front so I can just start the next part. I think I'm going to go around the middle and, or the outside and then the inside again, and then we'll start this whole thing tomorrow. Oh, this is going to go fast. Man, we might be done quick on Thursday, actually. Getting a little twisty, so I'm just going to let that dangle. Okay, so that's where we are tonight. Uh, let's just take a look at it uh, with, the, um, with the pattern again here. I mean, it's quite different than, than this. I mean, here, the red of the paws really works nicely with the red there, but I think it's going to look nice too. Maybe, uh, maybe we do go a little bit bolder with the, with the flower colors. Like we could do, well, we could do the purple and the mauve maybe, but I don't know. I kind of like it more subtle. I kind of like these two as the flowers. I think I, I, I think I still like that. And then we'll do purple for the dots in the flower, which I think still, put some fun emphasis on the middle. So, all right, I think that is the plan, you guys. Um, I'm going to see if I can get this, uh, this guy working again here. Yes, hello. So, all right, you guys. So this is where we're at tonight. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think it's looking awesome. Uh, we're getting far on it. Uh, it's going a lot faster at this point than I thought, which is great. We just had to make it through the, the needle turn applique. After we got that done, then psh, easy peasy. Back to embroidery, <laughs> which is nice and fun and, and quick. Uh, so awesome. So we will continue this block for the rest of the week until we finish it. Uh, if we do finish it early, which it seems like we might, we will start another block. Again, please leave your suggestions for which block we should do next in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And please join if you are not uh, part of that group yet. It is a group of lovely, lovely people, and we'd love to have you there. Um, yeah, and I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies uh, in a few minutes here. So Thank you again, everyone. It is so nice to chat with you again, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night.